another episode of Coffee and Careers with me, Gail Angus, the Careers Manager for the Adam Smith Business School. And me, Anne Duff, the Careers Manager for the College of Arts. So in today's episode of Coffee and Careers, we're going to be talking about getting ready for the upcoming application season. So graduate jobs and internship applications will start opening soon. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cover five key things that students can do to get themselves prepared um, and ahead of the game uh, when the applications open. So first of all, Anne, the first thing that students can do is probably get themselves organised. Yeah, absolutely. Get organised. Um, so one of the things that you can do around this is to look at the kind of organisations that you're interested in. So if you know you're interested in certain particular companies or you're interested in a particular occupational area that has a nice like the IPA, for example, which is the Institute for Petitioners of Advertising, you can um, sign up for alerts and information that are coming from those particular organizations or companies. Um, where this kind of helps you is that helps you to start forming out a timeline because you'll mm. see things, information coming in about when recruitment opens, when deadlines are, so you can start to timeline that out already yep. through the summer. And with signing up to job alerts, there's several uh, websites that we would recommend that you can sign up to job vacancies. Glasgow Careers is one of them uh, and Prospects and Target Jobs are two other ones that we would recommend. And we'll put that um, in the description of the video today so that you can actually uh, sign up to them as well. I would also suggest Anne, that in that get an organised piece that students actually start to think of their own system. Yeah. So. Um, Getting a graduate job or internship can actually be like a full-time job in yeah. itself. So actually being organised and thinking about how you're going to uh, save copies of your applications. Some people will still prefer to do that paper-based and printing yeah. stuff off and having a folder. But for um, those who are perhaps environmentally friendly and thinking about saving the trees, you might just want to set up a folder system on your computer, perhaps with outstanding applications, applications which the deadline has passed, etc. Think about how you're actually going to save your um, applications and start creating a system as yeah. well. I see um, students kind of with lots of versions of this, you know, I see people kind of with a big paper folder and it's all organized and people come in and they plug in a memory stick and they, they drill down into where they are. It is complex when you start to apply because timelines can be different. Quite often when you apply for a job, the job description that you've used disappears. Mm -hmm. So you you know, so you could get called for an interview and if you go to kind of find it online again, it's gone. So do kind of keep copies of um, the job description the application that you made, because again, when you hit send and it goes off into their system, you might not be able to get it back again. So make sure that you do keep that information and keep timelines of where you're at with each thing so that you can sort of see where you're at in the process. Yep, so get organized, sign up for job vacancies, um, create your own system. And also I would say just bookmark useful websites like oh, yeah. the Career Service website with our useful hints and tips, like our Coffee and Careers videos um, and our short advice videos as well that will help you during that application yeah. process. And the final thing I would say in this kind of being informed, stroke getting um, uh, organised piece is uh, follow all of the social media. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely keep up to date with uh, what we're doing there too. So you're already kind of got your organization underway. So the second thing that I would actually say is actually start to research. So if you know that there are a couple of employers that you're really targeting your applications towards, um, even if they, their process hasn't opened yet, go to their website and start reading up about their application process. What is that process? Um, is it an online application first? Do you have to do some tests? Is there an interview step? So become informed of what their actual application process is and then actually start to research the company itself. You will be asked at some stage in these application process why you want to work for that organisation and you know why you want to do that particular graduate scheme or internship. So, you know, if there is a few target companies that you want to work for, that's something that you can research now on and start yeah. to think about yeah. um, answers to those kind of key questions. Yeah, I agree, absolutely. And whilst lots of people will have an idea of maybe one or two companies, I think one of the things that at this point that can help you broaden your ideas is by looking at these kind of directories of graduate mm -hmm. schemes, if that's what you're interested in. So there's a couple that we get into the career service every year, the Times Top 100, the Guardian 300, and you might be thinking of one particular company and one particular kind of role or two, whereas these kind of allow you to look at other companies that you might not know about yet. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in terms of your research and, and reviewing, yes, if there's companies that you're interested in, 
and drill down into them, but also broaden your ideas out by looking at some of those directories. Yep, and you can pick free copies up of those in the Fraser Building um, on um, level two. You've, you've got organised, you've started to research and review kind of companies you're interested in. Next, I would say actually kind of think about preparing your CV. Yeah. Um, so not all companies are actually yeah. asking for a CV as part of the recruitment process, and quite often it is actually now an online application. Mm -hmm. But preparing your CV can actually mean that you're thinking about how you're yeah. articulating your skills and experience as well. Yeah, it puts you in the headspace, yeah. I think. And um, it works as a, as, as a template. So when you sit down to maybe do an application form and it's um, asking around a particular competency and you're picking out a particular piece of evidence that you have to build a star story around, it's good to have your CV there that you can sort of reflect on. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're being asked to use your CV to apply with, mm -hmm. it can be just all your stuff mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. If you then have to craft it down mm -hmm. to make an application using a CV, you have to craft that down into a two-page, targeted, focus Mm -hmm. document um, and you'll find information on our website we have a video um, that kind of is a short tutorial that takes you through the process of uh, the principles behind and the process of writing a CV. Yep so have a baseline CV but then if you do have to use it to apply then maybe we'd of course advise that you target it for each job role that you're actually applying for. Another thing that we suggest that you could do in advance to help you prepare for application season is actually online tests. So, <gasps> oh fun. <laughs> <laughs> online tests are um, quite a key part of large graduate uh, recruitment um, at the moment. So you might find that you have to do um, numeracy tests, situational judgment tests. Um, these are these are more and more common with employers and actually what we find is if students practice these they do tend to to get a little bit better and more familiar with the actual process yeah. as well so we'll pop some links up again um in the video description um that you can follow and actually practice some of yeah. these online tests yeah. definitely practicing um if nothing else, it takes the the, sh the shock value away when mm -hmm. you sit down to do it for the first time. You don't have to process at least kind of what mm -hmm. is being asked of me here. So the final thing that I would suggest then that people can do in advance um, to help themselves get prepared for the application season is actually make sure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date. Mm. So um, LinkedIn is the, the largest professional social networking site. And there's a few reasons why having a LinkedIn profile when you're going to apply for graduate jobs or internships is useful. And one of those is, I would say, is because it's the largest um, social professional social networking site, uh, when if somebody Googles you during the application process, LinkedIn results actually come up quite high in that search. So it allows you to kind of take control of your um, your, your your public persona and um, your, your personal brand, as I would say. So, so actually having a good LinkedIn profile means that if an employer does decide to Google you, that actually your LinkedIn profile may come up quite top in that search. Yeah. And also, um, so during the summer, it's going to be probably quite a quiet time for job search and for you. But when you come back to university in semester one, it really just goes like that, doesn't it? It takes this massive upswing. And we would be advising you when you come back to semester one to engage with all of the events that we run. So we run um, employer fairs, we run um, events around all of the application process. So there's lots of things going on. And if you're coming in and you're rocking up to an employer and you're asking them questions and then saying, it's a pleasure talking to you, can I connect with you on LinkedIn? you're going to come across so professional. That's going to really make a yeah. good impression and also it benefits you because you will capture that person as a professional uh, contact for yourself. So make sure you have a just done. Now is the time to do it when, you've, when yeah. you've got a bit of time. You don't have any study or, you know, you've maybe got a wee bit of space to do it. So now is the time to have it up, ready, done and start connecting when exactly. you come back. Exactly. And those of you who are getting into your final year, connect with people that you've met on your internship in the summer, if you've been away or your study abroad year. Mm -hmm. Start to really kind of build that professional network and that will really help you during the application season as well. So those are kind of five key things that you can do to kind of get yourself ahead uh, before the application season starts. So think about getting organised, research and review organisations, start to prepare your CV, practice those online tasks and really get your LinkedIn profile up to scratch. Um, finally, good luck during the application yeah. season. And do remember, as Anne said, that the Career Service runs a range of events that are designed to uh, help you to connect with employers and help you to improve your applications um, as well. So do keep an eye on the, the Career Service newsletter that comes out to your inbox and just come along um, when we're hosting these events on campus. So thanks again for tuning into Coffee and Careers with myself and Anne. And if you haven't already, please do like, comment and subscribe. And we hope to see you again next time. Mm -hmm.